Well, I'm here today in Dearborn, Michigan, and it's been a year since I've been here. Back when I first started the book, I did a lot of research in the Henry Ford Museum in the history of alcohol. But now I'm here today to do something different. I'm here to support the Ford Motor Company in their quest to change their product line and become more renewable. We're in the showroom at the uh, base floor of Ford's World Headquarters, and we're really uh, happy to see uh, one of Henry Ford's earliest mass production vehicles, the Model T. And this vehicle came right from the factory back in 1911, flexible fuel. You could run on both alcohol and gas. And here we're going to show you just how easy it was to go between alcohol and gasoline when you were on a drive and you never knew what fuel would be available. So let's open up the hood and take a look at the things that needed to uh, operate or change to be able to run on alcohol or gasoline. If you look way down here toward the bottom of the engine, this is the carburetor. This is the item that mixed the air and fuel before it went up into the engine. So this piece on top was the main metering jet. And it's basically a screw screwed into a hole. And depending on how deeply it was screwed into the hole would regulate how much fuel was allowed to go by. So with alcohol, we need a little more fuel for a given amount of air. So we would use a knob located in the cockpit to adjust this carburetor. So if we swing around, you'll see the knob right here, the cockpit, that allow us to go ahead and turn it to adjust the air fuel mixture of the vehicle from alcohol to gas. So I'll show you how it looks on the carburetor now. And the carburetor's linkage turns go ahead and screw in, in this case, the metering needle so that we could run it on gasoline or we could turn it out like this to run it on alcohol. So that was as simple as it was to change the air fuel mixture on the Model T. Now of course we would want to take advantage of alcohol's 105 octane characteristics and back then gasoline was only 50 octane so it's a big difference. Okay, so what Henry Ford did is allow us to change the way the car was tuned so it could take advantage of that high octane. So that's on the other side of the engine. Let's go over there. So the electrical part of the engine is found on this side. And what we have here is similar to the modern distributor. And this distributor, well, it distributes spark. So each one of these black wires is a spark plug wire. Spark is generated from inside this unit it follows the wire until it reaches a spark plug here on the engine. And the timing of when that spark plug fires is what we call ignition timing. Now, the way that these units had their timing adjusted was that they would be turned on their pedestal a certain amount, which would um, indicate how far in advance or how far behind top dead center we would fire the spark plug. Alcohol we'd want to fire earlier. So to adjust this for alcohol and gas, we go back to the cockpit and we find that right here on the column is our spark advance knob. So I can adjust it as you can see back and forth. Now if you take a look at the distributor as I turn this, you'll see how we can change the timing. So I can pull it down or I can push it up and this will change the timing of the spark within uh, the distributor. So by adjusting these two things, we could go from alcohol to gasoline, alcohol found on every farm in the United States, and gasoline found at Rockefeller stations in town. So Henry Ford had everybody covered with Model T. Well, this fine vehicle allows your brain to do the work of a modern computer chip. So if I want to change, to be able to use alcohol's high octane characteristics, I have that control right here at my fingertips. So right here below the steering wheel, I can go ahead and adjust the spark timing to race car levels and be able to run LT at a much uh, more efficient rate than I could if I was on gasoline timing, which would be up here. So the Model T Ford allowed you to use your brain to run the flex fuel vehicle that we nowadays you know, run by computer chips.